Good morning, Bedford United Church. It's great to see all of us gathered here today. We've got a few brave souls who have made their way out. Uh, the AV team is here and, and a, a couple of us who managed to make our way in today. And uh, it is winter again in Nova Scotia. It's finally come. Friends, my name is Reverend Matt Fillier and I'm the lead minister here at BC. Welcome to everybody online. We hope you're, you're taking it easy this morning. Um, and this is no better time than now to remind everybody, you know, just like it is for when we have uh, living with COVID or, or living with cold and flu season, if you look outside and it doesn't look like you really want to make your way to church, you don't have to. It's all good. You can join in, uh, of course, on the online stream. Uh, we tried to get word out to everybody early this morning by email that we'd be making a decision by 8 on the website and Facebook, and then we posted it when we could. It's that weird kind of Nova Scotia weather where it's like not so bad at 6 o'clock in the morning, and then folks don't know uh, what's going to happen. So we elected to try to cancel in person, and then uh, the rest of us try to do the best we can uh, today to broadcast live from the church. Uh, Paul, Reed, and I were already here, and the rest of the team managed to get here too. So, uh, friends, we hope you're safe and you take it easy today, and uh, it's glad to have you with us for the journey. So there's a couple of great announcements to make this morning as we gather for worship. Um, BUC is inviting you to come out for a potluck and board games night on Friday, January 20th. Uh, we need to know you're coming, so please let Caitlin know right, uh, in the office, or if you've got the weekly email, just RSVP by the link that is uh, sent to you for the event, if you're on the email list, right? So if you haven't joined our email list, uh, by all means, please do that. Just shoot off an email to office at bedfordunited.com, and Jen, our amazing administrator, will add you so you get all the latest news. The UCW annual general meeting is going to be held on Sunday, January 22nd, right after the service. And so, you know, on uh, Martin Luther King Day, January 16th, our Black Lives Matter lawn signs will be sold uh, for $10 as a way to recognize that day. So if you'd like to do that, uh, we will have signs here and the inclusivity team will be around to help you do that. Next week. That's right. It's already. It's next week because of what the date is today. Thank you, Jennifer Johnson. See, Jen's here. Uh, and that's great. So next week, we are doing the Black Lives Matter signs. So keep that in mind. We're also getting RSVPs right now for Family Ski Day at Ski Martok on February 4th. There's going to be lots of snow by February 4th, right, Caitlin? That's what we're hoping. They're going to make lots of snow either way. Uh, so let Caitlin know through the office if you plan to go, and she'll send you the paperwork because there is some stuff to do for that, and there's also a link in the weekly email. Uh, and um, I got some good news announcements here. Uh, that I want to make today, and this is that um, we had a variety of Queen's medals given out this uh, recently, this last few weeks, and uh, we have a couple of recipients here at Bedford United Church. Reverend David Hart received one of the Queen's medals, as did our very own Lou Turner, and if you're watching the live stream, Paul had uh, Lou's photos before the live stream started, and he'll have them after as well, and so congratulations to David and Lou. Uh, David, as some of you know, if you follow him on Facebook, He's not in these parts. He's all over the world. And so Daryl Johnston was there to receive the uh, award on his behalf. But Daryl also got what he lovingly calls the runner-up award, which is the Queen's pin. So Daryl also received a special acknowledgement for his work as well, and particularly around the Canada 150 celebrations too. So congratulations. Go figure. We have some pretty, pretty amazing folks at Bedford United Church. So friends, uh, online, you've got Reverend Katie Avens on there with you. She's your online minister today, as well as some of our regular worship and music online crew. We hope you're having a great chat there on YouTube. And uh, buckle up for what will be an adjusted service, right? It's going to be an adjusted service. It's going to be great. But as we gather, we gather on this land, acknowledging that Nova Scotia is in Mi'kma'ki the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And this territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Mi'kmaq and Malisee people first signed with the British Crown in 1725 in Annapolis Royal. The treaties did not deal with the surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Malisee title and established rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. 
Especially today, we also recognize and pay respect to the histories, contributions, and legacies of African Nova Scotian communities which have been here for over 400 years. Friends, as we gather today, with all these words in our hearts, it's a stormy one out there, but it's cozy here in the church, it's cozy online. We remember, as we light these candles, that however we connect together and enter in relationship, God is here. And all the time. We also remember that all are welcome. And all the time. Oh man. Tony, you have a huge choir. Take it away, my friend. Friends, with those beautiful words in our hearts and our minds, we turn to the sacred story on this, this winter day. And we're reading from Psalm 40. Uh, it's one of my favorite psalms, at least this part of it anyway. The psalms are the prayer book of the Bible, right? These are some of the most tender, tender pieces of scriptures we have in all the sacred writings. We are reading from the inclusive Bible uh, today, which you will see around Bedford United Church. And sometimes the inclusive Bible has some words that many of us are not familiar with. Uh, today you'll hear a word like Yahweh, 
And so some people understand that. It is a Jewish reference in the First Testament for the name of God. It excludes vowels, actually, when it's written because the God of name, God's name is so holy, you don't say God uh, when you're reading the sacred story. So they've chosen to put Yahweh in here just so you know uh, what I'm saying when, when you hear that. And so let's listen to the psalmist. Beautiful psalm about where we put our trust that there is hope. The psalmist sings, Unyielding, I call to you, Yahweh. Now at least you have stooped to me and answered my cry for help. You have pulled me out of the pit of desolation, out of the miry bog. You set my feet on a rock and made my steps firm. You put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to you. Many will look on you in wonder and so will put their trust in you. Happiness comes to those who put their trust in Yahweh instead of in human egos or people blind to the truth. How many wonders you've worked for us, Yahweh, my God. How many plans you've made for us. You have no equal. I want to recount them again and again, but their number is just too great. You don't desire sacrifice. Instead, you made my ears receptive to you. You ask no burnt offering or sacrifice for sins from me. And so I declared, here I am. I've come. In the scroll of the book, it is written about me. I desire to do your will, my God, and your law is written in my heart. I'll proclaim your justice in the great assembly. And I won't keep my mouth shut, as you well know. I've never kept your generosity to myself, but announced your faithfulness and saving action. I've made no secret of your love and faithfulness in the great assembly. For your part, Yahweh, don't withhold your love from me. Let your kindness and faithfulness constantly protect me. Friends, herein is wisdom. Amen. Friends, it is good to be here. Thank you for those beautiful words, choir. It was awesome. Okay, so we've got some folks here in person, and I know there's lots of you online this morning. So I'm just wondering, straw poll, out of the 12 months in the calendar year, whose favorite is January? 
There's some chuckles here. Yeah, John Dolar, just to be a stinker, raised his hand, everybody online. He's on our AV team. And, you know, I wonder why we don't think of January as the most wonderful time of the year. Like, there's got to be a reason why January brings with it skyrocketing demands for mental health services. It's not random that it's the home of Blue Monday. But, I mean, it's January. It's another new year, another spin around the sun, time for new beginnings in constant darkness, rain, freezing rain, debt from Christmas overspending, and feeling like I stress ate for the whole month of December. It really puts pep in my new beginning step, does January. And nothing says a new beginning like a New Year's resolution, right? By the way, these resolutions we make aren't usually new at all because they're often left unresolved by January 12th, which wasn't too long ago, the day that most of us give up on those resolutions, according to recent research. How's that going for you? (laughs) We often create unobtainable goals rooted in feelings of inadequacy or shame that we've picked up from our culture, ensuring that for a lot of us, January can be pretty miserable. I wonder, how is this fabled month treating you in 2023 and is it all that different from how you were feeling in 2022 you know our worship and music team we recently asked each other what does the soul of our community need to hear right now i wonder if you ask yourself those of you online and in person here today in your own heart what do you what does your soul need to hear right now Well, right out of the gate, our worship and music team said, hope, we need to hear about hope. Look at the state of the world at any angle, and we realize how deeply we need a constant source of hope in our lives as we face all the frenetic change around us. We need hope in 2023. Who agrees with that? Who thinks we need hope today? (laughs) We're seeing double hands, right? And the psalmist sings about where we put our trust in hope. Now, wonder. You know, today, where can we put our trust in hope? We thought about the climate crisis. I mean, surely we can put our trust in the hope that the need to save the third rock from the sun will unite every person in every country and every culture and political stripe, right? I wonder, where do we put our trust in hope? Maybe we all put our trust in the hope that the invisible hand of the free market economy will save us. Surely this endless threat of recession that everyone's talking about and decline is just a dip in an otherwise ever-growing, all-consuming engine of prosperity. In time, hope is going to trickle down on your pay stub and your pension plan and your benefits. All in good time. I wonder, where do we put our trust in hope? Maybe we put our trust in our institutions, in our political systems. Surely there's a beacon of hope lit in those Halifax and Ottawa halls of power and every bargaining table discussion across the country. Surely we can trust that this is where you're going to find the best and brightest of us united in the leadership we need to create a future worth hoping for, right? Where do we put our trust in hope? As the team thought about that, someone piped up, church is where hope is. Church is where we learn to hope again. Hope doesn't just fall from the sky. Hope is something we make together. And someone else said, that's why I'm part of this church, because Bedford United gives me hope. Every week I tune in and I see how what we're doing together makes hope for the world. And it gives me the hope I need to get through another week. I wonder, where do you put your trust in hope? The more spins around the sun I take with my neighbors and my God, the more I'm convinced that underneath that word hope is a foundation on which our hope stands. A a word that's a little bit harder to talk about. And the name of that rock that will not move or give way, no matter what this year or any other brings, is salvation. Uh Uh-oh. I said the S word. Salvation is a tricky word, especially for me. You know, when I was younger, my friends in other churches would say to me, Matt, you need to get saved. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I said, at 10 years old, (laughs) 
Sure, if this is about my love for Jesus, I love Jesus. I will always love Jesus, still do. And so I went to a prayer meeting at Bethesda Pentecostal Church with them, and I went forward with all the other kids, and I did the whole thing. And after that, as a curious 10-year-old that would be processing my grief, I asked my friends, eh, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So like, why did my mom just die? What difference did it make? I'm supposed to not hurt anymore because Jesus died for me, right? Like, I'm saved. So why am I in so much pain right now? And they said, oh, God's just testing you. You got to be faithful. You got to pass the test, Matt. Isn't your dad a minister? Like, why is this news to you? Huh. I guess it was news because I never thought of God as a professor that was evaluating whether I was good enough to make the grade of being worthy. I put my trust in the one that the psalmist sings about today, the one that doesn't ask me to offer any sacrifice or pass an exam in order to be good enough, the one who doesn't need me to sin in order to care enough to save me. That's not what salvation is about, at least for me. Salvation comes from the Latin word salve, to heal, a balm for a wound, hope for a new beginning. Salvation is never one and done. It's eternal. It's constant. It's not a miracle cure that says, do this and you're never going to hurt anymore. It's a living law of love that remembers a hard truth. Life is suffering, as our Buddhist friends would say. There's just no getting around it. And I will help you make sense of it and grow through it. The word of the Holy One, that's where the psalmist's trust for hope is. The psalmist sings that the first response to the divine is to patiently wait, to be vulnerable, to trust, to be open in everything we bear in our hearts and complete honesty and surrender. <laughs> That's a tall order. It's also a very human gift that we all have. Now, how can I do that if God is the professor evaluating whether I'm worth saving on the scales of judgment? I mean, who would want me? How could I trust I have a hope in hell or heaven of making the grade? Who wants the person who's stuck in a miry bog, whose life has become a desolate pit? God does. Who wants the person who keeps making the same mistakes over and over, lost in a wilderness of my own homemade suffering? Jesus does. Who wants the person who isn't able to forgive others because they haven't learned to forgive themselves? Jesus does. Who wants a broken world bent on repeating a history of inflicting suffering on the masses because of the rich ambitions of the powerful few? God does. Who wants to help us discover healing so that we have a lamp for our feet and a light for our path that will never go out? A light and a path that lead us to the promise of a future worth hoping for? God does curious this morning online and in-person congregation has anyone heard of this really obscure little rock and roll band called u2 anybody yeah yeah okay so in 1984 u2 wrote a song called 40 on their very famous album war google it uh, the lyrics are lifted straight from the song that we read today and i'll post it on facebook a little later in case you have trouble finding it in recounting his own journey of faith, U2's lead singer, Bono, spoke of meeting Reverend Billy and, and Franklin Graham back in the 80s. And Franklin was taking him to meet his dad by car. And, and this is the conversation in the car. I love this. Franklin Graham says to Bono, You, you really love the Lord. Bono says, Yep. Franklin says, Okay, you do. Are you saved? Bono says, Yep. And saving... Franklin doesn't laugh. No laugh. Franklin says, have you given your life? Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Bono says, oh, I know Jesus Christ, and I try not to use him as my personal Savior, but, you know, sure. Well, why aren't your songs like Christian songs? Bono says, they are. Franklin says, oh, well, some of them are. Bono says, what do you mean? Franklin says, well, why don't they... Why don't we know they're Christian songs? And Bono says, they're all coming from the same place, Franklin. Look around you. Look at the creation. Look at the trees. 
Look at the sky. Look at these verdant hills. They don't hold up a sign that says, praise the Lord, or I belong to Jesus. They just give glory to Jesus. Psalm 40 reminds us that lament, showing up just as we are, holds the hope of finding our voice of praise. I waited patiently for you, and you inclined to me and heard my cry. This is the salvation of lament. Lament is born when we're fully and completely ourselves, without pretense, when we show up and we come just as we are. That's how God needs us to be. And lament always arcs towards the horizon of hope, whose bright morning stars are just waiting to come out and shine. Lament isn't a miry bog or a desolate pit. It's the word of hope that doesn't restrain our lips or cover up steadfast love and faithfulness in shame or conceit. The song draws praise out of that miry bog today. You know, Bono would later write that in 1974, it took his mother away from him. And he says, but it gave me so much in return. My mom collapsed as her own father was being buried at his funeral, and I never spoke with her again. I saw her a few days later in her hospital bed as she took her last breaths. It was, I mean, People have gone through a lot worse, he says, describing a few of the horrors he's witnessed in his work with some of the most poor and vulnerable people on the planet. Four months before his mom collapsed, three car bombs exploded in Dublin, Ireland, and a fourth in Monaghan, killing 33 and wounding more than 300 people. One exploded near Dolphin Discs, the record shop that was Bono's regular after-school hangout, but he wasn't there. A bus strike the same day meant he'd ridden to bike on his bike to school and back, and he was home when the bombs went off. And he writes, I didn't dodge a bullet. I dodged carnage. He was 14 years old. And as he sought to heal that internalized trauma and terror, he went to churches and prayer gatherings, and he found a direction and a name to attach what he called an innate but incohate and formless sense of the divine. It struck him at his core, and it still does. God, Jesus, Spirit. And eventually, while all their contemporaries were stuck in the miry bog of singing about having no future, and that given the state of the world in the early 1980s, there was no reason to live, you two sang about lament, crying out, how long? And a mournful, we could be as one. The band was more prophet than dissident, aware that underneath a sense of injustice was this hope of restoration. And he would write, behind lament lurks hope. Yeah, grief becomes a kind of invocation, doesn't it? A prayer to be filled. That's what lament is. The hope of a prayer to be filled. I wonder, who's in that miry bog right now? The desolate pit. Whose feet are slipping down the muddy banks of how messy our lives can get? Who do you know that needs a hand up of hope to get them onto higher ground? Who needs a new song in their mouth? Notice the psalmist never says that we will be saved once and slip and slide no more. One and done. Oh no, that's not the story of the sacred scripture. We spend our whole lives working out our salvation. It isn't in past tense. Faith is a living thing. It's right here, right now, even in January. And even in this world as it is, even in your life and mine as it is, even where we are right now, we can sing a new song, a lament of hope. And everywhere we look, we see change and challenge. We read the headlines. We're bombarded by cynicism. And then I jump on a Zoom call on Saturday with 18 young Ukrainian girls who could have been stuck in the world of sex trafficking if it wasn't for Zavalia and Nashi here in Canada. And after singing these beautiful songs, I mean, you really all need to hear Silent Night in Ukrainian, they tell us that the last two years of war and caring for one another in, in the midst of it have taught them what home is, what family is, and what love looks like. And next year, all they want is to go home and have Christmas. That's a lament of hope. That's what lament is, a prayer waiting to be filled with hope. Hope is something that you and I make together. An elderly woman in Saskatchewan gathered up wheat seeds, and on the camera, she was pouring them into the soil in her hand, and she was telling the girls she was planting a prayer of hope, peace, love, and goodness in 2023 for their future and ours. 
Hope is something we make and grow together. So in 2023, Bedford United, let's put our trust in the one who invites us, just as we are, to do exactly that for the world we all love. Now that's a resolution worth keeping. Thanks be to God for a hope like that. The spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And all the people said, amen. Friends, part of our week before Christmas is we held a longest night service. And Katie and Caitlin uh, helped me lead that. And uh, it was beautiful. And one of the things that everyone did at the service is they talked about their grief, their laments, and they were tying, they were giving these beautiful ribbons, writing on them what was in their hearts, and Katie was braiding those. And you can see there that she took those laments and she turned them into something very beautiful. So I wonder, I come back to that question, you know, that we just asked, that the psalmist puts before us too. I wonder, what does the soul of our community need to hear right now? What do you need to hear right now? Together we come patiently waiting to listen for the Spirit. We come just as we are, a people who carry suffering and sorrow, both of our own lives and the world that we all love. And in faith we braid those sorrows in lament whose song arcs towards the horizon of hope, of the bright morning stars just beyond the horizon that shine God's love and presence that's coming into our lives. And together in the spirit, we become something beautiful, a circle that reminds us that no matter how much changes in our lives and our world, God's healing love is unending, a love that can't be canceled, a love that never fails, a love that leans us into hope for a world and a life made new. For that new song in our mouths today, we give thanks for a love like that. Amen. And it's going to take a really long time, everybody online. Um, but we do have Mike and Kathy here. And so in case anybody does want to come up or to, to pass out the offering, we will do that. Oh, she's got baskets. Look, see, they're so ready. They're so ready. They're amazing. Our friends, we recognize that as Kathy might come forward, as many of you, if you'd like to make a donation online, you can certainly e-transfer, go to our website and click donate and make that happen. Uh, and if you're in church ever at Bedford United and you see people do this over the plates, it's that they're saying, hey, I've made a commitment to go on pre-authorized remittance uh, to make sure that my, my gift is always there, whether I'm in church or at home, uh, I'm supporting the mission of the church that we love. So thank you for your gifts of money. Thank you for your gifts of time and talents. We couldn't do this today without our AV team coming with all their precious skills, with Tony and Nick and Nancy and Caitlin and everyone coming together to make this all happen. So thank you so much for all the ways that you volunteer and you give to keep our ministry alive. Tony, I think we've got a beautiful song to sing, do we not? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Kathy. Of 
Jesus' robe, then let it go. I have given you a name, it is mine. I have given you my spirit as a sign. With my wonder in your soul, make my wounded children whole. Go and tell my precious people. Friends, as we give thanks uh, for the offering, I invite you to pray with me as you feel comfortable. Holy One, a rock that will not move, the hand that reaches out to carry us to higher ground, we give you such thanks. You have given us your name. Our community's name as Bedford United Church is a blessing and a gift that we stand for love and justice genuine welcome and hospitality, caring for one another in a spirit of community and love. Thank you for that gift. And we ask your blessing upon these gifts that we share in your name and in the name of our church to continue that mission of helping to heal people who are wounded, of bringing people together in the spirit of love and justice that for us comes in the form of the good news that Jesus Christ and so many of the prophets in our own faith and in many faiths, have brought to the table, to us, to share. We pray these things in all of your holy names, in all places and throughout all times, even as we say, Amen. Friends, I'm going to invite Caitlin to come forward and lead us in our community prayer. I should say, Caitlin, that as you do that, our presider for today was Patricia Bell. And Patricia lives a little ways from Bedford United Church, so I told her, hey, don't even think about it. And uh, she was pretty uh, bummed because she's going to be away for a while. So this was her last time to be with us for quite some time. So Patricia, I know you're watching. We love you and travel well when the weather is good. And uh, this is uh, Patricia's prayer for us today that Caitlin's going to lead. And before we do that, I think uh, Tony and the gang here are going to help us center ourselves for prayer. So we just invite you to take a deep breath. Relax that body. Hopefully you're cozy. It's cozy here in the church. And let's just sort of fall in together that presence of the Spirit as we sing. So Patricia shared that sometime, something recently shared on social media had really resonated for her. And as I read it this morning, I see why. Every day, life grabs us by the hand and says, this is important, and this is important, and this is important. And it is up to us to let go and say no. This is important. You are important. So today's community prayer centers on you. So I invite you to settle in however you feel comfortable praying. And let's listen to this poem by Donna Ashworth and maybe hear what the Spirit is saying to you in this moment in time right now. You may think yourself lazy or flawed, yet your body is made of almost exactly the same elements as the stars. Your bone composition matches the coral in the seas, and you, my friend, are ruled by the moon and the sun, whether you like it or not. So no, you are not lazy. Nature is simply pulling you to slow. 
like the life, the flora and fauna around you, it is not your moment to rise. It is winter, and you are wintering, and you are right on time. Amen. And we have a beautiful blessing here from Patricia as well. Thank you for being with us this morning, whether you brave the weather or are sharing this time with us from the comfort of your kitchen or wherever you call home. We're glad you're here with us. Be gentle with yourselves go as you go throughout the week. And remember, this is important. Go in peace, go in faith, go in love. Please stand if you're able. Stay safe.